Hi, my name is Jim McKee. I want to introduce you to a patient, Megan. When Megan came in to see me, I started to talk to her about some aesthetic issues in terms of the wear on her anterior teeth, and all of a sudden Megan said, uh, I know there's problems there, but that's not why I'm here to see you. I'm here to see you because my jaw joint clicks. And once we hear that as dentists, we start to have a number of questions that go through our mind, as well as patients having a number of questions that go through their mind as well. Some of those questions are, is it a problem? Does it need to be treated? What can be done for clicking and popping joints? Do I need an MRI? Do I need a CT scan? And can't you just make a bite plate and fix my jaw joint? That's the typical question that we get. And as dentists, many times it's a difficult discussion. And really, the reason it's a difficult discussion is because we never really understood the anatomy of the temporomandibular joint. Because most of our anatomy was an indirect visualization that we learned from textbooks drawings. Those drawings were generated by artists based upon what Dennis thought the TMJ looked like. Today, we can see direct visualization of the TM joint through MRI and CBCT imaging. And ultimately, when we start to use that imaging, we start to realize that in reality, the United Media doesn't look anything like it does in the textbook. So let's start by taking a look at some imaging. Now, if we're not used to looking at imaging, what we're going to do is we're going to start out by talking about the disc, and we'll look at it on an MRI. Here's the MRI, and that's an MRI of a normal joint, so let's do a little orientation. We've got an anterior-posterior orientation on the slide, so the nose is towards the left side of the screen. Now I'm going to outline the joint socket. I'm going to outline that in yellow. Above that is going to be brain, and below that's going to be the TM joint section. I'm going to outline the condyle in red. And then if you look in between the yellow and the red, you see a bow tie shaped structure. We'll outline that in blue, and that's going to be the disc. Now, we talk about normal disc position. When MRIs came out in the late 80s and early 90s, the discussion was, what's normal disc position? And a paper came out that talked about normal disc position being 12 o'clock plus or minus 10 degrees. Let's move forward seven years. Another paper came out and talked about normal disc position being 12 o'clock plus or minus 30 degrees. When we have that much variation, what we really realize is that we didn't know what normal was. Today, thankfully, we've changed the way we look at disc position. In 2012, Provenzano wrote an article that talked about disc position really being analyzed by the load-bearing capability of the disc. And if we look at that, normally that's going to be about the 11 o'clock position on a clock face, which is going to put the posterior attachment at about the 1 o'clock position. So while in the literature normal disc position is referenced at 12 o'clock, Typically, clinically, we're seeing that it's closer to the 1 o'clock position with the newer research that we have today. Now that we've talked about disc position, let's touch on disc condition. If we talk about the disc, it's a biconcave structure, and it gets its nutrition through synovial fluid compression. That maintains the normal shape of the disc. So one of the key aspects that we have to understand in normal to have a normal disc, it has to be in the correct position for the synovial fluid to compress into the tissue. Since the disc is designed to be compressed during function, it doesn't have a blood vessel running through it, that's why the synovial fluid compression is so important to maintain the nutrition and to get proper lubrication into the disc so it can maintain its normal shape. Let's switch to a front view of the TM joint. That's a view that we're really not used to looking at, and if we take a look at the front view, we have a lateral and medial orientation now. We can see the joint socket in yellow, we can see the condyle in red, and we can see the disc in blue. Now when we talk about this view, we can start to talk about disc attachment. We've got a ligament on the lateral aspect of the condyle. We've got a ligament on the medial aspect of the condyle. But really, I think the thing to understand about this view is that the disc centers the condyle in the joint socket. One of the most important roles the disc have, obviously it protects the bone, the disc really plays the role of a gasket. And what it does, it centers the condyle in the joint socket so that when we close, we can have repeatable mandibular closing patterns. If we look at disc anatomy, the disc thickness is approximately 2 millimeters, so that's a pretty good rule of thumb to think about when we're thinking about the position that the disc takes, takes up in the joint socket. So really, what's the clinical significance of the disc? Really, it depends upon if you're talking about the adult patient or the growing patient. Let's talk about the adult patient first, and what that does, the disc in the adult patient protects and positions the bone. It also maintains the vertical dimension of the joint. We're going to talk about that in our next segment of this course. 
In the growing patient, it has a different role, and really what it does, it fosters growth to the full genetic potential. What we know today is that many of the kids who have the retronathic mandibles have structural alterations of the TM joint that start with disc displacements. So the disc plays a critically important role both in the adult as well as the child. We want to use the disc to prevent degenerative problems but to also prevent developmental problems. So I'd like to thank you for joining me in this segment. The next part of our course, our next segment is going to talk about the heart tissue in the TM joint and we'll look at CBCTs to get a better understanding of the heart tissue.